Hello and welcome to part two of fragrances that I will never stop recommending. If you haven't seen part one, I'll leave a, a thing up there that you can click and see because that was 25 to 16. This video will be 15 to six. So these are 10 fragrances here that I'm gonna showcase to you. And if you didn't see the intro of why I'm doing this, then again, please watch the, the first part. But effectively, I've been doing this for a very, very long time, or it seems it's six, seven years, however long it's been. And so these are my definitive recommendations as of right now and definitely for the foreseeable future. Number 15 is from the house of a duetto, Sisiver. This is effectively a clone of Grey Vetiver by Tom Ford, but a lot more richer and certainly a lot more full-bodied. I actually smelt this before I smelt Grey Vetiver, but effectively this is Vetiver with a lot of fruity notes and a heavy amount of florals. There's also some spices here. I can't talk about this objectively anymore. This does happen as a fragrance reviewer. When I smell that, I am so emotionally charged by the memories and the experiences, especially of canal trips that I've had with that fragrance. I can't really give you uh, anything more than saying, my God, it's beautiful, it's brilliant, it's wonderful, and, and please check it out. If you're a fan of vetiver, this will definitely be good for you, but if you're a vetiver skeptic, as in you like vetiver, but you don't like those really, really old, sort of older men, porridge oats like vetivers, um, like the vetiver that Roger Dove has and Colleen has. You wish that vetiver could be included with something sweeter and brighter to take off that rough edge. This is something that you should definitely look out for. As you can see by the bottle, this is completely aimed at younger people. This is a fragrance house that was aimed really more at people who lived in the city, young people who lived in the city, uh, urban urbanites, young creatives, young people who were looking for something niche, something different, something interesting. Hence also I believe their price point, which is very, very, very reasonable. It's only something like 95, 99 euros for 100 mil, which in the niche realm, well, at this point, is a godsend. So Citiva is wonderful. I actually did a review of Citiva on one of the canal boat trips that I took with it, and everything that you could ever know about it is there. And also check out Manny from Cascade Sense, his overview of Byredo and Triple Inks video also. Number 14 is from the House of Vulgari. This is Man Wood Neroli. This is an interesting one because of the fact that it is so straightforward and it is so simple and I was tempted to put this lower on the list, but it ticks a lot of boxes for potential fragrance users. Number one, very clean, very easy to wear. Number two, gets a good amount of attention, gets compliments. Why? Because it's simple and it's clean. Number three, price point, super reasonable. I think it's one of the cheaper Vulgari mans out there or if it's not on their retail, you can get it very easily at discounters for a very, very reasonable price. And finally, it's very well made. It smells very natural, it smells very good. It's a wood and Neroli combination, similar to that of Aqua de Palma. I mean, it's, it's effectively a classic wood Neroli, Italian style of fragrance that has been around since the beginning of time. And that's what makes it just so simple. That's just what makes it so easy to wear and very accessible to anybody, really, whether you're a beginner in fragrance or whether you've been doing this for a long time and you've smelt a lot of fragrances. It has something for everybody. Great beginner fragrance, great fragrance just to literally buy if you want something right now. But be advised, this is far more for spring and summer. Next fragrance is Tom Ford Ombre Leather. I'm always going to be uh, recommending this one for many reasons that you're going to hear on this list again and again. Very wearable. Price not so, not so user friendly, but for a Tom Ford fragrance, it's more accessible than the private line. A great 
clean, borderline soapy leather. It's very clean, very oxygenated, very aerated. So it's it's not too hard going, and that's another great thing about this fragrance. With Tuscan leather, which this is sort of based off of, you put Tuscan leather in, and you're in for the ride because it's so deep and so harsh. This kind of strips away that, but not also getting rid of any of the quality or anything like that. It it doesn't take away from that. It is Tuscan leather abridged and Tuscan leather for people in their 20s, effectively. But I love this. It's been fantastic to wear. Got a great amount of compliments, great amount of attention. I can't really see myself without this fragrance anymore. And that's something that's wonderful. So if you're a fragrance user who wants to maybe even start their autumn and winter collection properly, ombre leather is something you've definitely got to check out. I'm always going to recommend it to people who want just a great, straightforward, beginner cold weather scent. This next one, I mean, how? Fev D. Fev D by Christian Diop. The R is a little bit eroded there. Oh man, I love this. You know, it's just, it's phenomenal. Great praline and vanilla fragrance that smells very warming. Smells like a lot of nice, warm, like fudgy desserts. It might be a little bit too sweet for some people, but there is also a sandalwood that tones down the sweetness from being just completely overbearing and completely over the top. But look, this smells effectively like chocolate pudding with vanilla and with some nutty pralines over it with, with some woods. And it smells like that at the highest quality that it could be. And I love gourmands, I love vanilla fragrance, love chocolate smells, I love all that kind of thing. Ironically, I do love chocolate and, and vanilla, the smell of it, but I don't actually have much of a sweet tooth, like, specifically, I don't eat a lot of chocolate and a lot of vanilla, but I do like the smell of it, and I love the smell of, like, baking and adding those kinds of ingredients as well. Not a lot of spice in here at all, you're mostly just gonna get the vanilla praline and chocolate, Accord, so you don't have to worry if you're not really into spicy fragrances. This is not that, but I'm always gonna recommend this because of the high quality, the wearability, and it's just so much fun to wear. I've been recommending this since basically the day that it came out. Next one is for people who want a like super clean, high quality summer fragrance. We're gonna be going, of course, into 2021 and as early as February or March, I'm thinking, okay, summer lists, summer collection. What am I gonna be, what am I gonna be talking about? And you better believe I'm gonna be talking about this fragrance because this is just, it's a phenomenon. It's an absolute phenomenon. And everybody who I've recommended it to this year and who, who bought it for my recommendation when it comes to like reviewers and things like that, they've always had good words to say about it. This is Dior Homme Cologne. Alicia loves this, everybody loves this. <laughs> it's it's lovable, it's nose catching, to coin a term, I guess. It's a fragrance that I wear and people just smell it and they're like, yeah, that's, that's great, that's wonderful. The reason why is because this is just jam packed full of high quality citruses. It smells like a genuine lemon with some oranges underneath. I even get detected the smallest amount of lime with other elements that just keep it simple, keep it straightforward. It's amazing. Zesty, tangy, it's a phenomenon. If you have really high heat climates, uh, such as, oof, how hot can you go? You know, near the equator, Saudi Arabia, um, Africa, like anything, that just the hottest climates that you could think of this would be absolute magic. If I go to Italy next year, I'm gonna be wearing this and another fragrance that I'm gonna be getting into later on. But yeah, this is perfect for really hot weather climates. And the thing that really sells it is it's so natural, so zesty, just fantastic. Always gonna recommend this one for summer and for the high heat. However, for me personally, there is one that does it better. There is a fragrance that can tackle those really, really high, humidity and high heat climates very well. And that is the fragrance that I'm planning on 
whenever I can get back there reviewing in Los Angeles because the last two times I've been to Los Angeles I've always worn this. This is Aqua Universalis Forte by Maison Francis Kurdjian. This is everything that I said with your arm, clown, but you take down the zestiness and you actually add more of a balsamic white floral and it gives it an innocence, it gives it a naivety and it gives it a humility that I really really enjoy. Some people will find this quite basic. I wore this around Jeremy in LA and he said, no man, don't wear that. Wear do you own? And I was like, it's like 28, 29 degrees outside. He's like, no, but you are complicated personality and your own is complicated fragrance. You don't want to wear uh, Aqua Universalis Forte. You want maximum strength, all that, all that stuff. Love you, Jeremy. Hope you're doing okay. This, although I get what he's saying, you know, I'm a little bit more out there than the usual person, but sometimes I like a straightforward and simple fragrance to sort of ground me in reality, which is a place that I seldom live. And um, but it's it's fantastic for that very quaint, innocent nature by the really, really wonderful class of citruses, but then just sort of like made, how do I put it? It's not exactly grounded. I wouldn't want to say that. It's just sort of more warmed up in a way and made more balsamic again by those florals. So Aqua Universalis Forte, phenomenal, phenomenal fragrance. Then we get to this. Ah, oh, I'll just run through it really quickly. I talk about it all the time. Hugo Boss scent, absolute. Again, biggest selling point for me is I kind of feel as though I didn't have to buy like 10 to 15 designers this year or and last year when I discovered this because I'm like, all oh, right, this is kind of most of those fragrances abridged. There's a lot of repetitiveness in designer fragrances right now. It's just the name of the game at the moment. But I don't feel as though I have to buy a Zara Wanted now or Invictus because of this fragrance. There's also even some uh, niche fragrances that are trying to play that amber sweetness game, amber woody sweetness game that's in here. I feel as though I've saved a lot of money just by buying this. It's great, it's wonderful, love wearing it. It's a nice bottle as well. So yes, I'm never going to stop recommending it, especially if you are interested in mainstream designer fragrances that are very sugary and woody at the moment. Look, you want recommendation? There's your recommendation. Number eight is the Laurent Sport by Chanel. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. And um, some people love it, some people hate it. You know, don't, don't buy Versace Pour Homme, come on. Don't buy Versace Pour Homme, buy the real thing. You know what I mean? Really, save an extra, what is it, 20 quid, 30 quid, come on. And by Alarm Sport. Incredibly well made fragrance. It was a fragrance that started the trend of aldehydics, uh, aldehydes in fragrances, with, uh, which mixed with citruses that kind of give it this kind of fizzy, woody, citrusy nature. There's also a nice element of really warming vanilla in here. It's fantastic, phenomenal. Smells sexy, smells good, smells amazing. It was the height of popularity in the noughties, but has now fizzled out, but that's good for you, because that means that you can wear this and not a lot of other people are gonna wear it, but that's not because it's bad, it's just, it, it had its time, it was amazing, it was phenomenal. And then, you know, Savage came out and Aventus came out and everybody's eyes went to that, but you can now comfortably wear this, you'll get a lot of attention, a lot of compliments, a lot of sexy stares, to be completely honest with you. It's a very, very sexy fragrance and very good fragrance to wear. And I still get compliments from it to this day in, in the summertime, like a lot. Some people prefer Eau Extreme, I get it. Some people prefer Edition Blanche, I get that even more. But to me, Alarm Sport is the Chanel fragrance that just keeps me going and going and going. It's phenomenal. Now we get to number seven, and of course, the legendary Kisses Rain. Almond, vanilla, fruits, sweetness. I even get sometimes a little bit of like caramel, sensual, romantic, poetic. And for me, 
at this point where I feel peak romanticism, fragrance apprentice, I feel like peak poetic fragrance apprentice, this is really doing it for me. Uh, always did. But now, yeah, I'm always going to recommend it. Always, forever, because it's fantastic. If you like Febdal issues, but you want something a little bit more flamboyant and something a little bit more adventurous, if you want to smell something that makes you want to just go out there and live and really, really take on the adventurous side of fragrance, then go for this. If you don't like more feminine or metrosexual fragrances, don't go for this. It's not going to work for you. You know, if you're like a fan of ombre leather or anything like that, please don't, just don't bother. Um, but yeah, phenomenal fragrance, love it. Now finally, number six, to conclude this part two, is a fragrance that is now my Aventus. It's a fragrance that I'm going, this is the fragrance I'm going to be wearing to Italy, no doubt, and I just love. I just can recommend this to so many people, it's unreal. So many people. And please be aware this is number six, right? Um, it's in the top 10. It's just shy of the top five. It's great. I can recommend this to a million people. The thing that stops it and slows it down in its tracks is the price point. I do think it's overpriced. I think it's really quite overpriced actually. But if you've got the money and you are intrigued and you're really sold on this, then always go for it. But I will openly, openly, hands in, hand in the air, say, yeah, okay, fine. It's, the, the price is a bit cheeky. Ayoko, 1954, I'm Mirage, 23. The Italian Aventus, the Italian Stallion. If you love Aventus, if, if you love all the Creed fragrances, actually, but you, but more than that, if you love Creed, if you love what Zergeoff does with their citrus fragrances, if you love Aqua de Palma, what they do with their citrus fragrances, if you love what Chanel does, if you even love what Dior does with their citrus fra fragrances, just try and get your hands on this, right? This, to me, is one of the ultimate citrus fragrances in my collection as a whole. It beats Alorum Sport, it beats Diorum Cologne, it beat Aqua Universalis Forte. The thing that gives this a real edge is the way that fruits are used, the smokiness and the harshness of Aventus that's taken and then explored with the more Italian discipline of citrus perfumery. This is an Italian fragrance through and through. It's the best of Italian fragrances. This makes something like Vulgari Man Wood Neroli, like a, a very, very cutesy rendition, you know, a pantomime of Italian citrus perfumery, rather than this, which makes it look like it's a, a full-on blockbuster of Italian citrus perfumery. Probably my favorite style, probably my magnum opus of Italian citrus at the moment. This is a tough one to beat, and as I said in the previous video, I don't put a big dent in fragrances because I have so many of them and I'm, I'm spraying different ones at you know different times. Look how much I've used of this. I absolutely love it and adore it. And I'm even getting nervous by how much I've used of it. You know, am I going to have to get a backup bottle? It's that serious. But a phenomenal, phenomenal fragrance. I recommend this to everybody and anybody out there who's willing to listen to me. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. So I'm going to tag a few more people today, four more people. First person I'm going to tag is Cam from North Carolina Fragrances. Please, it doesn't have to be top 25, doesn't have to be mad, it can even be a top five if you want, or top 10. Cam, please tell us the fragrances you will never, ever stop recommending. Second person I'm going to tag is Josh from Scent Sense. I love you, buddy. I want to know what uh, fragrances you're always going to recommend, probably throughout your lifetime, never going to stop recommending them. Let me and everybody else know. And finally, I want to tag the two Curlies. Curly Scents and Curly Fragrance. Andrea and Michelle, respectively, I want to know from you the fragrances you're never, ever going to stop recommending to people. 
Anyway, thanks for watching this, and if you want to be notified when part three uploads, the final, the top five fragrances I will never stop recommending, then hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified the instant that video is uploaded. Thanks for watching again, and I'm the Fragrance Press. Goodbye.